Secrets of the Paleozoic Era, Permian Period. 260 million years ago, the Carboniferous Period ended and the Permian Period began. The last period in the Paleozoic Era. The Earth looked something like this. Tectonic plates traveled across the plain at unnoticed by the standards of human time and it would not be surprising if in 200 million years Earth would look something like this. Interesting fact. During this period, the formation of Pangaea, a supercontinent ended. The Hu superocean Pantalesa, hoping about 70% of the planet's surface, washed the shores of Pangaea. A second major ocean, the Paleotethys, washed into the shores of Pangaea from the east and was responsible for the relatively mild and humid climate of the coastal regions, creating shelters for moisture-loving land dwellers. The end of the Permian period accounts for the most devastating mass extinction in Earth history in 542 million years. The beginning of the Permian period was marked by glaciation on the southern continents and a corresponding drop in sea level across the planet. However, as Gondwana moved northward, the land warmed and the ice gradually melted. At the same time, parts of Eurasia became very hot and dry, and vast deserts spread there. During this period, vertebrates began to dominate. According to some data, up to 82% of all the animal genera living at the time. The marine fauna of the Permian was much poorer than that of the Carboniferous. Foraminifers were rare, the number of sponges, corals and echinoderms decreased sharply. New forms of brachiopods that live in the Indian Ocean today are emerging. The zones continue to exist. These creatures formed reefs. Astracod and worm-like crustaceans achieved significant development. Cartilaginous fishes were the most prosperous class of fishes in the Permian. They were sharks with spiral teeth. The cartilaginous fish, the ancient stingrays, also belonged to the cartilaginous ones. Freshwater sharks appeared. With the beginning of the Permian, amphibians became quite diverse. Small forms, few centimeters in size, live side by side with giant frog ancestors that reached the size of bullfrogs. While quadrupeds accounted for about half of all vertebrates in the Carboniferous, in the Permian the share of these animals increased to 69% of all genera. Since the beginning of the Permian, amphibians have become quite diverse. Adapting to terrestrial conditions, these creatures spent less and less time in the water. The most prosperous group were the dark spondyls, the Suborda Iscalia. These are rather thick and sedentary animals with a massive head and a short tail. Iscalia ranged in length from 40 centimeters to 2 meters. Among Iscalia, Platyhistrix is particularly interesting. This creature grew a folded cell on its back for the more regulation. This is a unique case among amphibians. In the Permian there was an animal that greatly interested scientists. The Prionosexus. This freshwater creature, as an adult, was virtually indistinguishable from modern crocodiles. The Prionosexus was the largest animal of the Permian period. The predator could reach up to 9 meters in length. The other large group was the Lepospondylida. These were small creatures from 25 centimeters to 1 meter. Many of these animals had lost all or part of their limbs. This is Eryops. One of the most formidable predators of that era, the Eryops was over 2 meters long. Eryops hunted smaller amphibians and reptiles and possibly fish. The Diplocal and Diplosibus were very strange predators. They were flattened animals with huge boomerang-shaped heads and eyes pointing upward. Apparently, the creatures were hiding in a layer of silt at the bottom of bodies of water, 
waiting for prey to swim right over their heads. No one really knows why the heads of these predators were so strangely shaped. Perhaps it was their head that they used in a fight to strike their enemies from the side. Or maybe it was a kind of underwater wing that helped the animal to rise up while swimming. After a while, the climate became drier. The amphibians, with their moist, porous skin, had to take shelter in the few mostoses that remained among the deserts. Many of the animals became extinct. A new group of animals that were better adapted to the arid environment began to spread rapidly across the planet. These were the reptiles. The first reptiles were small and similar to lizards. The creatures fed mainly on arthropods and worms. But soon larger reptiles appeared, preying on smaller ones. Over time, both predators and their prey acquired large and powerful jaws to fight against numerous enemies. Over time, the reptiles grew larger and more ferocious. While amphibians, like their fish ancestors, produced by laying eggs in water, reptiles began to lay their eggs directly on land. The evolution of reptiles was very rapid, since there were no animals on land yet capable of competing with them. Long before the end of the Permian period, reptiles displaced stegocephals. Primitive reptiles called cotyledons gave birth to numerous descendants that later took over water, land and air. Measuring from a frog to a hippopotamus, the various creatures still had many labor vedontic traits. Teeth and ribs arranged from the neck to the tail, short massive limbs. But the structure of the skull, vertebrae, and skin were already the same as in reptiles. Another animal nature was occupied by periosaurs. These herbivores were up to three meters in size. Periosaurs had bony bones in the shoulder girdle characteristic of fish and amphibians. The periosaurus skull was a continuous bone box with openings for the eyes, nostrils and parietal organ. These animals lived on the banks of rivers and lakes. Cotyledons reached their heyday in the mid permian when they became extinct at the beginning of the Trisic. But the descendants of these animals evolved vigorously. Permian reptiles adapted to a wide variety of environments. Most groups of animals became more mobile and skeletons of creatures became lighter. These animals fed on a variety of foods. The diet consisted of plants, mollusks, and fish. Real predators are also appearing. Pelicazars. These animals had higher ridges on their spines. In some reptiles, limbs lengthened and skin bones disappeared. The teeth of herbivores became flat, and a four-meter-long predator like an astroncilia had real fangs. Among the predatory reptiles, forms resembling modern wolves, hainis, and martens appear. This suggests that the lifestyles of animals of that time and those of today were similar. All Permian reptiles are divided into two classes. Savropsids, the ancestors of modern reptiles. The beast eaters, the ancestors of mammals. Of the genus Periosaurus, scientists have isolated the most popular representative called Scotosaurus. In Perm, the older Mesosaurs were separated from the terrestrial Anapsids. They were the first reptiles that returned to the aquatic lifestyle. Permian Mesosaurs were small reaching a size of up to one meter. Mesosaurs had needle-like teeth. These teeth acted as a sieve. The mesosaur took a mouthful of small invertebrates or fish, clenched its jaws, squeezed water out through its teeth, and swallowed whatever was left in its mouth. The second evolutionary branch of the Zavropsids. Diapsids. One of the species of Diapsida. One of the first evolutionary attempts to make a land lizard. 
These animals experienced a heyday in the Carboniferous and gradually became extinct in the Permian. Archosauromaths are the ancestors of crocodiles, dinosaurs, and birds. The animals are relatively large, up to two meters long. Some are beginning to look vaguely like dinosaurs. The first of the flying reptiles was Celerosaurus, whose remains have been found in Europe and Madagascar. Externally, the reptile resembled a modern flying lizard. The Celerosaurus reached 40 centimeters in length. The wingspan of its arms reached 30 centimeters. The reptile's light skeleton and skull reduced its total body weight. The creature had a crest on the back of its head, which improved its aerodynamic qualities. In the Permian period, there were the ancestors of lizards and snakes, the Lepidosauromaths. Primitive infracosaurs were a transitional link from amphibians to reptiles. In the Permian period, these animals were not yet extinct, although they gradually declined. Anthracosaurs were semi-aquatic and reached three meters in length, but most species were much smaller. The other large class of reptiles that lived in the Permian was the beast eaters. Animals that belonged to this species had incisors, fangs, and knobby molars. Beast-eared mammals also resembled mammals in the structure of the scapula and pelvis. All this evidence suggests that the beast-eared tooth-eaters were the ancestors of mammals. By the end of the Permian, a group of more agile beast-like reptiles emerged. They were Goganauts. The only reptiles had legs on the sides of their bodies, like many modern lizards. For this reason, these reptiles moved only in a lurch. The bodies of these lizard-like animals bent from side to side as they walked. The Gorgonops reptiles, on the other hand, had legs growing under their bodies. This allowed the predators to take longer steps and therefore run faster. Many Gorgonops were armed with huge fangs capable of tearing through the thick skins of armored reptiles. The beast-like reptiles, or synapsids, were the most thriving group of reptiliomorphs of the Permian. These animals gradually evolved toward mammals. Synapsids grew fangs, fur and swake glands, and learned to maintain a constant body temperature. The most primitive of them all, pelicosas evolved into many different species and became the largest and most common reptiles of the era. Most pelicosaurs had large teeth, and it can be inferred that these predators hunted large game. Some species switched to plant food. Plants were much slower to digest. The stomachs of plant-eating pelicosaurs had to hold a lot of food and for a long time. So these animals must have increased in size. However, very soon the carnivorous reptiles became larger as well. The Cacesaurus. Cacesaurus was up to 6 meters in size, weighing up to 2 tons. Most of the families of Cacesaurus were herbivores, but there was one insect-eating family. The largest terrestrial animals of the Permian were Cacesaurus, but their large size didn't save these creatures from rapid extinction. In the second half of the Permian period, all families of Cacesars were wiped out by Gorgonops. The family Varanopsida grew noticeably during the Permian, but no other changes occurred with these animals. At the beginning of the Permian period, the mammalian ancestors of Spanacodonts were experiencing the heyday of their evolution. They were the largest and most advanced predators of their time. The largest of these animals could reach four and a half meters in length. Another more advanced group, belonging to the synapsid class, were the therapsids. Therapsids had limbs that did not stick out to the sides like those of pelicosaurs and modern crocodiles, but were positioned almost vertically beneath the body. This allowed therapsids to run, though not very fast. But this class of animals did not yet know how to curve the spine to accelerate running. The rapsids had no scales or fur. Many had tactile hairs on their muzzles, much like the whiskers of cats. Predatory therapsids had well-defined fangs. 
The first crop that separated from the general line of the rapsids belonged to the genus Biomosachus. They were predators from 6 meters in size. The largest of these species was Evanthosaurus, named after the traveler and paleontologist Ephremove. The next large suborder of the rapsids was Dinocephalus. These animals were characterized by a very large skull with very thick bones. They were herbivorous, hippopod-like creatures up to 5 meters long and up to 2 tons in weight. The animals of this class did not eat grass, but nibbled on the lower branches of tree ferns or chewed on semi-decayed trunks. A new species called Titanozones of the Dinocephalus family was already less picky about food. Like boars, his creatures switched from a purely vegetarian diet to a more universal one. On occasion, Titanozones consumed carrion and probably hunted small defenseless prey. Another not so thriving family of the suborder Dinocephalus was the Enthusaurus. These were large predators, like bears, up to six meters long with a tail, but relatively slender, no more than 600 kilograms. The next member of the Therapsids was the Suborder Anomodons. These were small creatures from 20 centimeters to a little over a meter, metas herbivorous and insectivorous. Some members of this suborder lived in burrows. Some Anomodons had two large fangs on their upper jaws, which were used for digging edible roots out of the ground. Another suborder of Synapsids was the Veriodents. These animals had a normal set of teeth like mammals, incisors, cannons, and molars. The most highly developed rope among the Veriodontids was the Gorgonox. Gorgonox were the first creatures capable of running fast for short distances. At the end of the Permian, Gorgonox dominated all ecological niches of large terrestrial predators. Gorgonops ranged in size from fur meters. Smaller Gorgonops look similar to modern wild dogs because the ecological nature was the same. The largest of all Gorgonops was considered to be Inostrancivia. Another suborder of Veriodents, Theracephalus. Unlike Gorgonops, the limbs of Theracephalus were widely spaced, which did not allow them to run fast. Some Theracephals, such as Sachambashir, had venomous teeth, like those of modern snakes. Other species of beast-like reptiles arose in the Lake Permian. Dysonodents. Some of these species were no larger than a rat, while others were as big as a cat. Dysonodents live mostly on land, but some shifted to aquatic life. Toward the end of the Permian, some groups of reptiles became warm-blooded. This meant that they could stay active longer and didn't need to warm up in the morning after a cold night. The last and most advanced suborder of the Theriodonts was thought to be the Xenodonts. They were the direct ancestors of mammals. The skulls of Xenodonts had changed. Their jaws became stronger and more rigid, allowing them to chew larger prey. Scientists believe that Canadans developed a furry coat to maintain their body temperature. These animals were very similar to mammals. It is even believed that the Platypus and Echid are in fact the same Canadans that survive to this day. The end of the Permian period was marked by great cataclysmic events. The continents collided, new mountain ranges were rising, the sea was advancing on land, then retreating again. The climate changed frequently and dramatically. Millions of animals and plants were unable to adapt to all these changes and disappeared from the face of the earth. In this greatest extinction in the history of the planet, more than half of all animal families died. More than 90% of terrestrial animals and 70% of marine animals became completely extinct. Ancient corals also disappeared, to be replaced by modern reforming corals. And finally, the final extinction of the trilobiates. 
Thank you for watching this episode to the end. Give it a thumbs up and leave your comments. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. And do not forget to click on the bell not to miss new and interesting videos from the channel Real Unreal.